just like two hours last night? Well, maybe a bit more, maybe three and a half, I don't know. What I wasn't counting. <laughs> right. What have you been doing lately? Like, how has your schedule been? Have you been rehearsing a lot? Mm -hmm. We try to, we've been trying to rehearse like five days a week from maybe 12 hour rehearsals per day and then on top of that I'm sitting back home and then mixing stuff, doing like mixing demos we record at the uh, rehearsal place. So it's a, you know, it's, a, it's not hard work but there's a lot of shit to be done and I'm lazy. So yeah. I'm a little lazy but you know, I, I tend to work on concentrating on the little things and then I forget about the inside, big fucking picture or something. Yeah. Being busy. Are you excited to go to LA? To start the album? Yeah, well, yeah, I'm excited to start the recording of the album, not necessarily to go to, to LA. LA. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, Long distances, and I don't drive. <laughs> and I have a license, so it's a shit for me. Uh, so, Matt Squire is a guy who's worked with like more pop stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, he's worked with Panic at the Disco, mm -hmm. Katy Perry. Uh, <laughs> have you heard the uh, Have you heard any of the new the used album? The new one, no. Okay. Because the original was supposed to be coming out like around this time, and I think now they pushed it back and it's coming out in August. Uh, but that's a really heavy one. That's the heaviest one he's done. Yeah. He, he he has worked with Skindred, for example, the Welsh mm -hmm. like raga metal band. And um, but the used album was the one that convinced the rest of the guys in our band to want to work with it because it's. It is catchy, yeah, it's big and all that, but it's, it's very, it's more metal. Okay. You it's like the like, use? No. no. <laughs> I like the guys. It's yeah. not that, it wouldn't, you know. I like I, the I, first album. I don't dislike it. So, but I'm not, let's say I don't have any albums. I haven't had the time to really, dear, you know, dive in deep in the realm of uh, the used. So, I don't know shit about it. I've met them a few times and met a lot of people, but I, right. I don't want to, I don't want to rock this stuff. Uh, so, if you don't want to answer more personal questions, it's... We'll see. Okay. We'll so see what happens. <laughs> uh, are you feeling, like, uh, melancholic at this point of, in your life? You I'm would always say? Feeling, I'm always feeling... You know, always. <laughs> I always feel a bit melancholic. But it's, I guess the whole term melancholy, you know, it's melancholic is... You know, some people consider it to be a bad thing, some people consider it to be, right. like, a wistful kind of longing like a poetic, you know, the yeah. blue moment, kind of, you know, positive sadness in that sort of sense. Mm -hmm. So, so it could be both of those things, and uh, I guess I'm somewhere in between. And have you been dating? Dating? Yes. Oh, you know, <laughs> you know, let's say my, my hooks are in the water, but no fish have really <laughs> caught, been caught yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't date. You know, fish people rarely date, and I hate the idea of dating. So what I do is that I, I usually fall in love, and then I spend a lot of time with that person. Right. So I don't like to go out. I don't like dating people. Okay. Uh, Bukowski would say that uh, it's easy to love a person when you don't know them too well. Well, then, well but in those times, probably what Bukowski was kind of, you know, being without at least his soul was the fact that it's easy to mirror your own dreams on the Sorry. first one you don't know that well. So, so you can make that dream kind of happen in front of your eyes and then when you start knowing somebody too well, it kind of taints the yeah. picture sure. really easily. So, you know. Do you wish to find love again? Uh, um, but depending on the love, because I don't believe that there should be only one word in vocabulary for love, which is love, because love is always different with different people, and it's based on different things, and, you know, yeah. Okay. It, it, yeah, it's just, it's just different. Yeah, I want to be swiped off my feet, and I want to be on my knees. Yeah, sure, who doesn't? But, uh, you know, uh, I'm fairly patient, and I, I rather wait for it to happen, that, that dive in head first, and, uh, in a place where I don't want to find myself again. Mm -hmm. so, no rush. Are you really uh, releasing the album on Valentine's Day? Trying to, yeah. yeah. Why not? Well, it's not necessarily on the 14th. I don't know what day of the week it is. Okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, you're right. That time. Or Valentine's Day. Yeah. So you've been without alcohol in your life? For four to uh, something years. How 
did you have the strength to stop? Well, let's say I... Uh, well, you know, I guess they came from the fact that I did have the strength to destroy myself fairly, completely, so seeing yourself uh, losing a lot of things you uh, like and love in life and the things that make you who you are, let's say music, and I wasn't able to perform or write songs or do anything I know, just any of the box. So, so that was one of the reasons that gave me the strength to stop. But, uh, do you think it's easier to write without that? You got more, you got more in it. But then again, what, what you do lose is, is, is meaning. You know, do, do a lot of things you really do. So, you know, so I, am, I don't go out anymore. You know. I'm a hermit. But then again, I have gone out and done a lot of weird, fucked up stuff for, what, like 12 years in a row. So I do have a lot of stories, so maybe now's a good time for me to be a hermit and live in my little place and just figure out, you know, all the things I've done. And then when I'm run out of stories and run out of songs, then it's a new time, you know, for me to start, you know, you know or start hitting a crack pipe or something. <laughs> Make life a bit more interesting. <laughs> and have you been reading lately? No. No? no I usually read on tour. Because uh, you don't have TVs or anything like that. And it's helped me concentrate you know, at the moment, so that's one of the things that I've not been doing. What are your favorite authors? Um, I don't have any. You don't but have any? Favorite authors? No, I'm one of those guys that I have maybe like 3,000 books back home and I've read 500. Uh, so I like Palladio at one point a lot. Chuck Palladio, the guy mm -hmm. who wrote all that. Choke and whatever. Uh, Lullabies could put. But, um, yeah, yeah, but then again, he keeps on repeating himself. Yeah, right. And, right. Which is not necessarily a bad thing, it's his signature mark, but it does get <coughs> a bit weird at times. Again, there's a guy called uh, William Christopher uh, uh, Bear, is, uh, Bear, I guess it's in it, or whatever. He, he has that similar sort of touch. He did Kiss Me Judas, Penny Dreadful, and Acres of Hell, like a trilogy. And that's pretty good. You'd like it if you like Blanny, probably yeah. like that too. It's still like a film noir, well, not film noir, but like they're kind of fucked up. You know, a lot of drugs and a lot of sex and a lot of moral things. But I'm, I've been probably reading like children's books and then. Children's like, books? Yeah, books with a lot of pictures. Like <laughs> nature books and stuff like that. So there's not a lot of, a lot of stuff to read actually. But uh, no, I, have, I have a lot of books. What, I, that I want to start reading, but I'm, I probably will like start. Like what? Uh, it's Scarlett Thomas, one of the writers, that released uh, the book of Mr. Y. No, the story of Mr. Y, and now released something I just got in the past. So. Well, that person has the right name. I guess she's called, you know, I guess the name is Scarlett Thomas. A British writer, you should check it out. The story of Mr. Y. It's just very weird and very different. It's like a Victorian novel with like a, like weird stuff with time and space. Mm -hmm. So there's like several stories happening in different places sometimes at the same time. It's good. It's interesting. Right. It's different. So um, since we have our weathers are so different, mm -hmm. and I'm from Rio, mm -hmm. and I wonder, uh, do you feel more inspired in the winter or in the summertime? Well, I don't think it matters. I guess that, you know, it's, it's about the season in your heart. Greetings, O oh Earthlings. In the name of uh, True Finnish Love Metal, this is uh, Billy Hepman Evolve from a band called Him at the moment. Pleasure of listening to Shark Box. Take it easy, dear people, and uh, have a nice life. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> have a nice life.